you for attending our panel talk study at this last session introducing our degree program called Master of China Studies, in short we call MCS. My name is Sasso Kim, Senior Program Advisor, and I'll be your host today. Today we have three other guests from MCS, and before we start our conversation, can you guys introduce yourself one by one? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Thomas Weick, uh, Assistant Professor and uh, Academic Director uh, at the China Studies Institute at ZIPS. Uh, my name is Tian Renzi. I'm the coordinator of the program Master of China Studies. So hello everyone. My name is Rodrigo. I'm Brazilian, and I'm a student here. Thank you. Thank you all for attending this panel talk and trying to share more information and advice to our future MCS students. So my first question goes to Professor Thomas. So as an academic director, can you share more information on the Master of China Studies? What are the core subjects, and what kind of knowledge can students can gain? Yeah. Um, so this is an uh, MA level degree program, which of course has a very uh, strong emphasis on China's uh, economic, social and, and cultural aspects. Uh, but also partnering with uh, Zhejiang University International Business School, ZIBS, um, it basically offers this infusion of business trends as well into the, the study of China. Um, and starting from 2021, we now have this, uh, in addition to the original track of Chinese culture and society, we now have the business track as well. Um, and the aim of this, this business track is to try and cultivate students' China's business experience with a, a global perspective and intercultural competence uh, through a very solid theoretical foundation and excellent uh, business experience. Um, and there's also, you know, it's important to mention the courses as well uh, that we offer. Um, so it's this very interdisciplinary uh, curriculum now, as I've just mentioned, you know, having the business and the social, economic and cultural aspects. Um, so students will be expected to pursue their Mandarin studies. So no matter what level you come in at, there will be an emphasis on the language because you're expected to try and integrate with uh, Haining, the, the, the society, and, and Zhejiang as, as a province over ho overall. Um, and there's also other core topics and subjects, such as intercultural competence, where it helps you to build up that you know, level of cultural competence between you know, different countries and interacting with people from different countries and cultures. Uh, the lecture series of Chinese studies, uh, history of Chinese civilization. Um, and then, of course, we have the, the track of business, um, where you will be expected to interact in courses like Chinese business studies, uh, Chinese finance market and fintech, um, innovation management and digital commerce in China. Um, and for the Chinese culture and society, there's courses such as uh, family and society in contemporary China, um, women, media, and Chinese society, and China's intellectual history. So you can just get the sense from this that this is a, we're trying our best to make it a very interdisciplinary uh, Chinese studies uh, MA degree now. Wow, it seems like our Master of China Studies program is so much well designed to nurture uh, experts in China, delivering not only in-depth knowledge, but also uh, with the practical experiences open for our students. So I believe our future MCS students may be more interested in gaining knowledge about the core structures. So Tianlun, as a program coordinator, can you deliver some more details, uh, information on the program structure, like credit systems, course modules and such things? Okay, uh, as Thomas just mentioned, we have two, uh, two track for Master of China Studies. One is the business and another one is culture and the society. For the business track, uh, students will take more uh, economic class and uh, some management class like uh, microeconomics in China and uh, uh, Chinese business law and uh, fintech innovation. And for the cultural and uh, uh, society part, you can study the class like uh, uh, gender studies, uh, Chinese intercultural history, something like that. And, uh, and we have two type students. So uh, first type is one year students from joint program in partner university, and second type students are from, uh, they are individual applicants. And for one year students, they need to complete at least 24 credits. And uh, for two year students, they need to complete at least uh, 30 credits. 
Thank you for the detailed information. So now I would love to hear the real experience from our Master of China Studies student. So Rodrigo, as a 2020 batch, would you like to share more stories about you, how you came across with this Master of China Studies, and how does this program fits to your plan so far? Okay, so uh, I chose this program first for its quality, and also because it's one of the oldest one here in China. And according to my searching, I think this course is uh, the widest one. Here you will study about, uh, you will learn about uh, history, uh, Chinese language, uh, communication, uh, Chinese culture, but uh, you also will learn about uh, Chinese society, media, uh, cinema, art, architecture, so many other things. So I, I think I really think this course is this program is uh, complete and wide. And as a director of a Brazilian institute called Ibrachina, uh, that promotes the relationship between Brazil and China, this this program fits my career and also my life. Wow. I really believe that Rodrigo can be a strong bridge between the relationship of China and Brazil. So, okay, then I have one more question to Rodrigo. So you have been experiencing our campus life and also studying under our program for three to four months so far, right? Mm. So how, what is the most surprising thing so far that you have been experiencing? Oh, so first is about the campus. It's really amazing, <laughs> really beautiful. And here I have, everything that I need, you know, like I have a comfortable room, nearby my dorm I have a laundry, a uh, gym, and uh, also here in campus you have bank, bank and a uh, small market with affordable price to students. So I think everything here was well planned uh, to in favor to students and professors. And also I think uh, uh, the most surprise uh, surprise I think is the relationship between professor and students they are really accessible and then if, if you have any doubts or if you need something you just send message to them and they will do whatever they can to support you yes well wow, great seems like our professors are really open to our students and as I was also an international student two years ago I personally also enjoyed the campus life so much it's so convenient and there were a lot of extracurriculars in and outside of the campus. So regarding the extracurricular activities available for the Master of China Studies students, Tianlun, as a ca co program coordinator, can you explain more on this extracurricular activities such as internships, community activities, and such things? Uh, yes. Um, so most of my MCS courses so are all included a few trips. Uh, I can give you some examples. For example, uh, one course called uh, in the um, progress of modernizations. Uh, in this class, we'll bring students to the rural and countryside place in Zhejiang province. And uh, you can uh, go there and directly talk to the people from the communities and uh, even the local government staff. And uh, you can see how the local people and the government put efforts on the rural modernization in China. And uh, another course uh, it called uh, uh, in in Introduction of public policy and uh, technology innovation. Uh, this class we bring students to see some technology companies in Hangzhou. You know, Hangzhou is really developing fast uh, these years, and there are so many technology companies, and uh, s some of these companies already build a partnership with Zhejiang universities, for example, uh, Ant Financials, which is really famous, uh, uh, internet financial companies. Uh, they also provide uh, in, uh, uh, internship opportunity to our international students. Wow, sounds very fun. Actually, it seems like our program coordinators understand that knowledge is not only gained in the classroom, but also outside of classroom activities. Now I'm getting more curious about the academic supports that is available for our students. So Professor Thomas, as an academic director, can you share more information about the academic uh, supports available for our students from our professors and academic directors? Yes, so um, all of the professors have uh, set office hours uh, during which, of course, students can come and find us with issues in their not just academic social life, any issues they're having in campus, 
But of course, uh, academically, they can ask us about issues with you know, homeworks, uh, discussions, presentations. Um, and also, I'm hoping in, in the coming year that we can try to set up more seminars as well for students where they have this uh, engagement with the other, other classmates and teachers, you know, discussing their research uh, and things like this. Um, and also, it's important to mention um, that we offer a lot of advice to students on uh, further, you know, pursuit of, of academic careers. So, particularly uh, for a, a doctorate degree, a PhD degree, uh, we can offer them uh, support in their, uh, you know, further application after their master's uh, studies. Well, it seems like our professors and academic directors are trying to create more friendly and open environment for our students. But I believe there are still some more challenges that our students are actually facing while studying in China. So, Rodrigo, as a student in MTS, do, do you have any challenge that you have been facing so far and how did you overcome or how are you overcoming it? Mm. So, the first challenge was the, the reallocation process, you know. When I arrived here, I don't know, I didn't know w w nothing like where, when and how. So. Uh, but I, I hear uh, uh, in Zhejiang Dashui, they have some guides that people who will help you a lot. And I'm the lucky one because Tianlong was my, my guide. And so almost every week I send message to him asking something, you know, and he will support me. Another uh, issue is about the, the language. Uh, of course, here in your campus, almost everyone can speak English uh, very well, but sometimes you need to go out, you know, and uh, it will be useful to learn Chinese. And yes, this is uh, it's challenging. <laughs> it's still challenging. Still challenging. But I know that, Rodrigo, you, your Chinese is bu chuo. It's getting getting there you know so I'm glad that you're also overcoming this by studying more Chinese and also keep in touch of your program coordinator and our professors as well so and then due to this unusual situation there are like classes arranged on and offline and then the teachers and students are connected on and offline as well so uh, regarding this kind of situation professor Thomas how are you dealing with this managing the students uh, who are online and who are offline. Uh, yeah, so of course we have the, uh, the WeChat app uh, in China, which allows us to establish like group contact with students. So this platform allows us to communicate with them on a daily basis if necessary. Uh, any questions they have, they, they can find us. Um, and also, of course, by email, they can tell us any time with any issues they're having uh, with online studies. Um, but also, it's important to, to emphasize that you know students have to realize and, and teachers have to realize this is quite a new uh, process online learning. So there needs to be you know patience um, on both sides, uh, and I find that it helps uh, to give students you know frequent uh, you know during the online classes to give them opportunities to speak. Uh, to debate, uh, to ask and, and to answer questions. I think this helps students to be more involved. Uh, and I trust that all of our uh, professors are also doing this. They're also offering students this online platform to you know, express themselves more and, and feel part of, um, of, of, you know, even though they're not here, uh, they can be here in, in, in spirit, I suppose we can say, and try to uh, engage more with us. Great. I couldn't agree with you more when you said we all need to be patient yeah. because, yes, this is a learning process and I'm still proud of our professors and students trying to not only adjust in the situation but try to be more active, actively involved in the communication and involved in the class, online class as well. So before we go to the admissions process, I will, we have one important topic left. So this question goes to Professor Thomas again about the thesis. Can mm. you explain more about the thesis process mm. and uh, what kind of requirements? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think we can talk about the original uh, plan because of course um, it's changed now uh, with, with the, the pandemic. Um, but if we just go back to the original plan, uh, the first step is of course the, the orientation uh, for students, uh, for MCS students. Um, so for one year groups, uh, orient orientation begins at the end uh, of the fall semester. Uh, and for the two-year groups, orientation begins during their second year. 
Um, the second step is then the thesis proposal. So they have to write a, a proposal of about a thousand words. Um, and, and then they basically take uh, part in a proposal defense where we as professors ask them questions, try to offer uh, advice, you know, to prepare them for their, uh, their writing of, of the thesis, um, uh, basically. Um, and then one year students are required to do a, a progress report, uh, and that's at the end of the uh, summer semester. Uh, two year students are not required um, to do this, to complete this report. And then, of course, the next step is the thesis submission. Um, so one-year students are asked to submit uh, in February of the second year, uh, and two-year students are asked to submit in March of the second year. And then this is the, the, the ultimatum, basically. After submission, um, the you know, uh, thesis is get put through a, a peer review process. So there will be two professors from uh, Zhejiang University internally, and there will be one professor from outside of Zhejiang University, so externally, that will take a very close uh, review uh, of their thesis. Um, and if they pass all three of these peer reviews, they can then go on to the, um, the defense of their thesis. Um, and if you know, we find there's issues during the defense, we will ask students to then go back uh, and uh, revise this thesis. But it's important to emphasize that all of this process is, is for the good of the students. And it is actually, in my opinion, a really good preparation for a PhD study because um, it puts students through that you know, very uh, vigorous, very stressful process, but it really is very, very useful uh, academically. It gives them that confidence, I think. Thank you for the detailed information. I think it's very well structured. And I, of course, it's not an easy process, mm -hmm. but with the, our program director and also academic director's help, I believe all of the students can go through it. Good luck for it, Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now let's move on to the, our admissions process for 2021 enrollment. Our application for 2021 enrollment is already open. So it is a crucial moment for you, all of you, to prepare the required documents and go through the process. Uh, Tianlun, as a program coordinator, can you deliver more detailed in information about the admissions process and share some tips and advice for the future students? Okay, uh, actually the admission process is kind of simple. Uh, I, I would like to say there are two, uh, three steps. So first step is your online application. Uh, you submit your op online application and uh, we will review all your application uh, documents and uh, we go to the second step, we will arrange uh, online interview for use. And after that, we, if we think you are really qualified, we will give you a pre-admission letters. And if you say, if, if you ask me, is there any tips? I would like to say, um, make your personal statements in more details because we, we really want to know about ourselves. So maybe you can just write more information about your working experience or your interest to feel for the research topics when you come to, uh, come to China, come to ZJU to continue your China studies. Um, that's it, I think. One more important question okay. left for you. So any scholarships available? Uh, yes, um, in ZJU we offer two types of scholarships, uh, uh, Zhejiang University Type A and Type B. Type A is a full scholarship, and Type B is a partial scholarship, but both scholarships will cover your, um, cover your tuitions. And another very important scholarship is called Chinese Government Scholarship, uh, but it's another system uh, outside from ZJU, and I think it, it's, uh, uh, they, pay, uh, they pay more compared to ZJU scholarship. Thank you for the really detailed information. I believe our applicants would find it very helpful. So Rodrigo, as a previous applicant who went through all these process and then successfully got admitted, would you like to share some advice or tips to the, your future classmates in terms of the application process, admissions process? So we think the, the process is really very, it's not, it's not hard. You just need to follow and then you ask some documents and it's, it's just this. But I, 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 I think that all the students also need to check about the documents uh, with their own embassies because you know it's different. Uh, we, uh, some different countries, different rules. So sometimes, uh, uh, like me, I needed more documents uh, with my embassy to to 
to send to them. So I think it will be useful if you get in touch with your embassy. And if you will receive some money from your parents or your from your home country, uh, so extra money, you must know how to transfer this money. This will be really useful. I see. Thanks for great advice and tips. So before we close our panel talk, I would like to leave the last question to the Professor Thomas. Do you have any advice or message that you would like to leave for your future MCS students? Uh, yes. Um, when you, you know, prepare to, to take the course, uh, and I think this is true for anything in life as well, you should, you know, ask your, or, you know, tell yourself three things. Uh, keep three things in mind, basically. Um, the first is, is keep your goal in mind. What are you hoping to achieve by you know doing this course um, the second is to work hard and, and be organized because you know everything about uh, academia is, is organization you know timekeeping trying to you know prepare yourself for everything uh, and the third thing is is have perseverance and I suppose this is 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 as it gets into the further academic life the, the masters and the PhD it's really really important to, to keep going uh, and don't give up because you'll find yourself I'm sure having times where you think, okay, why have I chosen this course? But when you persevere and, and you succeed, uh, particularly uh, by, by you know, taking a degree in China, I think you'll find it's very, very worth it. Very, very, very worth it. Well, that was a really valuable advice. I think all of us should keep in mind that why we're doing what we're doing. Yes. So now it's time for us to close the session. Thank you all for taking your time and trying to deliver more valuable information to your future MCS students. And thank you all for participating in this panel talk and showing a great interest in our Master of China Studies program. Feel free to contact us if you have any further questions. You can find the contact information on our official website, or you can even search Zhejiang University International Business School at a Facebook and send us a direct message and our admissions team will reply to you shortly. Thank you again and hope to see you all in this campus in the very near future. Bye-bye.